Here I'm going to uh, talk about the challenge that I have to get Bluetooth capability uh, to play music in my Volvo XC90. It's a Mark I 2009 model. Um, it has this audio system in it which you can switch between um, a USB drive which, you, which is in the glove box there. There's a little USB drive on the end there. Um, you can switch between that, um, a, a CD player, which is a slot here, and also uh, an auxiliary line which is here, located here for plugging in a, a device. Now what I had hoped to do was to be able to plug in an iPod to that which in fact does work and it's uh, you get quite a lot of information from the iPod if you make a wired connection but then you have wires trailing around. So I had hoped to be able to use this a little Bluetooth module like this, a LAN um, uh, dock iDock thing which is for a, like a Bose audio system then with a little uh, connector here to connect to the iPod sort of early mo mo iPod interface and then plug the USB in there doesn't work no doesn't work unfortunately so yeah so okay so I've got the music uh, from the USB which is quite nice that can be played uh, you can access the menu system the menu system is indeed a little bit tricky because um, the software in this system is not very smart and how uh, the order in which the uh, the data is written to the USB card shows up as the order of the tracks so you end up with uh, things that are completely out of alphabetical order and potentially um, out of uh, out of synchronization you need to use a, a software utility called drive sort uh, to update the uh, the order of the entries in the file allocation table. So each time you add new tracks to it, you have to run this utility to make sure that the order appears correct. But when you do that, then that's no problem. Uh, you know, when you do that, you you end up with uh, uh, things that oh, you end up with uh, uh, files that are in alphabetical order, so you can scroll up and down, uh, yeah, without any particular problem, and then you can. Uh, you know you've got tracks that are in in the right order and uh, it all makes a lot of sense however i would like to be able to get without having wires trailed around i would like to be able to get music from an ipod into this so if finally the option that i came up with was to use this auxiliary line here and rather than again plugging having wires trailing around the car because this is a really stupid design so you have to have this open when you plug something in here it's quite tight so you know you've got this open and, and wires ah, it's a mess so what I thought I'd do is I'd put an analog output device with a with a Bluetooth input capability into that and I found something so here I bought I bought a piece of hardware which is kind of buried in this cloth here uh, out of that has got a jack so you can plug the jack in here and then here you've got a, a 12 volt uh, supply source that you can connect into uh, into the car uh, through a fuse and therefore you would then be able to get Bluetooth into this and then the analog would go in here and then what you do is take this out there's a bunch of space underneath here and you can bury all of this wire and lose this uh, lose this jack input there which means that you can then turn this dial here to auxiliary and you'll get the wireless Bluetooth capability in the car it does work but this particular piece of hardware that I spent the time installing turned out to be uh, really crappy in terms of uh, in terms of the amount of interference it was picking up from the uh, from the um, uh, alternator so we'll wine which is uh, uh, engine speed dependent so in the next video I shall talk about the the next phase of the uh, uh, solution to the problem okay so solution mark two first of all let's use a little bit of more isolation on the uh, the electric supply side so rather than going straight into the 12 volt system um, use a, a USB device that goes from 12 volts down to the, the sort of 5 volts so we've got a USB uh, device here driving this quite nice it's got a higher quality uh, DAC chip a Wolfson DAC in it and it um, it uses the latest Bluetooth protocol so you can connect up to eight devices and it automatically connects etc so it's quite a decent piece of kit it's from neat it's a Bluetooth receiver so the power goes in there so you've got an, a, an optical output and then it has um, a, uh, a, a jack output here there on the other end of that jack output that can go into into the uh, 
this device here. So I shall just now connect that up and let you see that working. Okay, so now I have connected up the 12 volt power supply to this Bluetooth receiver. And then I've plugged the audio output, the, um, the analog output line into the input for the, uh, I see it's on the auxiliary there. So now this, this audio system is connected, in fact, to my iPod here. So if I press play, hopefully, yep, there we are. We're getting now music from the iPod. Through the analog line, through to the audio system. I can switch between that now and also to the USB, which is in the glove box. And back again. Perfect. Okay. So the bottom line is that basically this solution seems to work quite well. If I, um, if I just turn the volume up on the audio, you can hear... Actually, there's a little bit of noise coming through when you turn the volume up very high. And when you run the engine... I'll turn that on now. When you run the engine, well, there's a lot of air from the air co system. Hang on. Turn the fan off for a second. So um, you can hear there a little bit of wine. Now that's the volumes are quite high at this point to be able to pick that up, and uh, the normal listening level is at this level. So actually I can probably play that now. Oh, it's managed to disconnect when I started the engine. Let me, uh, let me just make sure that's connected. Yeah, actually it transpires that this module that they sent me has got a fault. It's not automatically connecting. So I'm just waiting for a, a replacement to come, but that's a secondary issue. There we are. I'm revving the engine now, so there's no nasty, there's no nasty whine from the alternator coming through at normal listening volumes. So I mean, only, only if you were in the situation where you uh, where you uh, had no input on and turned the volume up a great deal would you pick up noise from the alternator. Nevertheless. My plan is to use a further isolation on the 12 volt line. So when I decompose this um, unit here, the electronics in here, and attach it to the to the uh, 12 volt system, I will uh, uh, put a, um, a, a, an isolation uh, system in from from Halfords or something like that, in order to just further suppress any any noise or ground loop problems that there may be in the system. And and then on the next video, which will be probably over the weekend. I will be setting this all up using shorter leads and uh, getting into this unit here uh, to taking the screws off the telephone here. You can get in here and then uh, and then I'll show you how it'll all be installed and there'll be no wires visible and it'll be automatically connecting to my iPod and I shall have Bluetooth and I shall have a USB stick and I'll have a radio and I'll have a CD player. And then I think from that point I should be uh, quite happy with it.